of God's laws are men have to teach you about God's laws. You understand? I God. Think men have to teach us the laws. The Bible is already written. It's the Bible is the instruction for us. You know what I want next? Well, that's it. I'm going to show you that's your own opinion. But that's not what the Bible says. That's not what God wants us to follow. But men after teaching. you read it from the mouth of God, now you're going to understand it, right? Because this is God's mouth. You know that. The Bible is God's mouth, right? Isaiah what God 8, said. verse 28. 20, 27. Acts 8, verse 27. Uh -huh. And he rose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of Ethiopians, uh -huh. who had charge over all her treasure, okay. and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, yes. was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Okay. The man coming from... That was Paul. Paul. You see, when you was asking your question, I asked you yesterday, quiet, I want to understand it. When I'm winning the answers, you interrupt me, that's showing you what? You understand? You see what I'm saying to you? Because in a class, in a classroom, right? We listen to the teachers, right? Then we ask questions later, am I right? Then why, when it's time to dealing with God's words, we, a woman is over succeed the laws of God? So, that means something wrong with your. You understand? Isaiah, you saying that we don't no men have to tell you God's laws, right? That's what your 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 opinion tells you, your thought tells you. But we're here to prove that all all thoughts go against God's law. You understand? That's what you say, right? Man, but now we have to prove to you that a man must teach you the laws, statutes, and commandments. You understand? Okay, go ahead. That's why we're proving now. Go ahead. Then the Spirit said unto Philip. Go near and join thyself to this chariot. Uh -huh. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah. The man is reading the prophet Isaiah, right? So let's see if we have understanding of just what he read. Go ahead. And Philip ran thither to him and, and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? Now the prophet Philip wrote to the man and said, Do you understand what you just read it out from Isaiah? Let's see if that man said, God going to show me everything. I don't need you, Philip. Philip, I got the Holy Spirit. I don't need you to teach me anything. Let's see what God said. Go ahead. And he said, how can I except some man should guide me? The man humbled himself to the prophet. He said, how could I understand this thing here unless a man, a man guide me? That means God going to send his prophet to guide the people, which that's who we are. Go ahead. And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Okay, the man said, come up and teach me what I just read of. Go ahead. And the place of the scripture which he read. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad you bring that out. That man was a humble man. He know he didn't know nothing. But he had humble his spirit to say, teach me. But that's not what you're bringing out here. You understand? You bring out your own opinion. You understand? When we, we the men of laws, we the men who research this Bible, we're going to tell you what God said, not what out of our own opinion, what we learned from that man right here. Everything you bring out, you learn it from him. You understand? But the thing we learned today, we learn it from most High God Almighty. You understand? Because America says a woman can wear pants. That's how we know that you're in the philosophy of America. Right. But the laws of God say a woman not supposed to wear pants. Custom. It's a custom of sin. It's a custom of sin. And that happens everywhere. Yeah, me, but Everybody has different traditions. Though. Yeah, me, but give me Ezekiel 20 verse 3. Since you said it happened to everyone, let's see what God said. Should we stay in that sin? Wait for the coming of Christ, or should we turn away from our wickedness and change wearing dressing skirts like God commanded you to wear? Or are you going to say, it's a custom, Lord? Let's see what God say on that. Ezekiel 20, verse 33. As I live, say. 20 and 3. Son of man, speak unto the elders of Israel and uh -huh. say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, are ye come to inquire of me? Because that's what you come to do to us. You come to require of God, right? Because you want to know if Korea is the next Christ. Is Korea going to, they say there is a Christ over there. It's a new, you just want to know what's going on here, right? You come to require of God, right? Let's see what God said. As I live, saith the Lord God, I will not be inquired of by you. God said you will not be required by, uh, by, by, by you. Go ahead. Wilt thou judge them, son of man? I thought that men cannot judge. But God tell Ezekiel, you judge them. That's what God says to Ezekiel, right? You judge the people, Ezekiel. Go ahead. Son of man, wilt thou judge them? Uh-huh. Cause cause them to know the abominations of their fathers. 
cause them to know the abominations of the fathers. Our pants is abomination. Of your tradition you learn from who? The white man. So we're here to show you your transgressions against God's laws. That's our job, right? So we're here, read it again. Slow as you can understand. Wilt thou judge them, son of man? You see, would you judge them? Meaning that we don't come to condemn you, sister. We tell you judging is just change your ways. Before you condemn, before Christ come, destroy all human ways who don't keep God's commandment. You understand? That's our job. Go ahead. Wilt thou judge them? Cause them to know the abominations of their fathers. The judgment he want Ezekiel to judge the people is to let the people know they're breaking my laws. The abomination. You remember the words is there? The abomination, right? Now let's check the Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Let's see if the same word is there when a woman wearing pants. Remember that we're here to show you your abomination, right? Let's see that, what God said. Go ahead. Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. A woman not supposed to wear that pertaineth to a man. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Go ahead. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Okay. Neither shall a man dress like a woman. You understand? But you yourself, Sister America, say you can wear that pants. I make woman pants. But pants is pants, sister. The name pants is pants. There is no such a thing as woman pants. You understand what I'm saying, sister? America, uh, yeah, to show you that Say man been doing his job. Huh? Say that again. When I came to America, I started wearing pants. You I see that? Wore dress before. Listen to what the sister said. When you come in your country, you used to wear dress and skirts. When you come to America, now the dress code changed, right? Uh -huh. Why the dress code changed in America? America is a place of sin, sister. Where all people who inherit, who want to do their own thing, they come here in this country. To entertain sin, if you want to know everything about yourself, what you made of in your heart, come in America. America will pull out this demon on you. You understand? This is your church? Yes, that's the church here. What sister, I'm glad you're here. Come on, sister, we're not going to bite. We are, we are here for you, like wow. your sister here. What do you mean? No, no, no. Let me bring this out in the hot dog. Go ahead. But all that do so are an abomination. You see that? You see the same word he said? All that wear pants are what? All that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. That's our job to show you, sister. No longer wearing the pants and you're repenting to Christ. Because all this philosophy is given by the men of sin. Which is you just testified it. You learn it from who? The white man. Just say it straight. The white man. Because in your own country, Woman doesn't dress like that. You understand? But in America, now look at our sister. That they can just being beautiful, they can dress like a prerogative like that. But the Bible said that dress for Joe have on is like the same thing as either a prostitute or lesbian or a calling girl. You understand? That's to, that's what the dress code is for. Okay. But since y'all don't know that, our job is to reveal to you what God said. Wearing pants is in uh is what? In what? Abomination. An abomination unto okay. the Lord thy God. What was that job of the prophet to do? Go back to the prophet now. Remember now we've been the pants. A man wearing a skirt is an abomination. That means homosexual is an abomination. But America, Obama bring all these homosexuals in the White House the other day. We have to accept these people. They're like human, like me and you. Some of them was born gay. There is no man and no woman born gay. That's the failure of a mother and a father. That's all it is, a failure of a mother and a father who's supposed to watch their kids growing up. But they were so busy in the club, they were so busy in themselves, they let their kids catch these demons. You understand? That was your job. You have failed. Go ahead. Will thou judge them, son of man? You see that? Will we judge them? Not the judgment that we will come kill you, but we will judge you and say, sister, that's against God's law. Same thing when you go in a law, in the East or Court law. When you go in front of the white man, what did he tell you? For what you did, I'm going to judge you for it. That's not what he said. But when God, judgment is to warn you. Because that true judgment is coming where you're going to be put to death for wearing pants. Our job right now is to warn you. Say, sister, turn back your way. That's the Bible? Yes, sister. Everybody got? Yeah, everybody got? Yes. Yes, sister. I want to read the part of the pants. Yes. Thank you you got a pen? Much. No, no, you got the information? Yeah, yeah I mean, talk yeah. to that brother right here. He's going to give you all the information. Good. Sister, come, come close. 
That Deuteronomy 22 verse 5 say a woman wearing pants is, uh, is filthy, is in abominations, right? Our job is to show you your sin, change your way of life. You understand? Because everything we learn in this society is sin. We have not known God. You understand that, sister? I'm going to agree with you. Yeah, we have not known God. Because you remember, oh, hold on to this. I want you to go listen to what I'm telling you, what I'm asking. Sister, your beauty come is not because dress like you. Excuse my language, because that's what the dress code is. We start dressing outside God's laws. So when we do that, we cause our people to sin against God's law. You understand? To be tempted in this way. Yes, you understand? But us coming back to God's now, this is our job to teach your guys how to live a godly life. You understand? Because the Christian world, the so-called religion world is not teaching you that sin. Because your question was, is that the same Bible I got? Is that the same Bible they got? Yes, these are the same Bibles. You understand? I mean, but they have not teach our people the proper way. Let's go to Isaiah now. Let's see what prophet Isaiah is going to reveal to us in this latter day. Go Isaiah ahead. 29 verse 13. Wherefore the Lord said, for as much as his people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their hearts far from me, and their fear towards me is taught by the precept of men. Now read it slow now. For, wherefore the Lord said, for as much as his people draw near me with their mouth. You see, in so-called religion world, they are all joined to the Lord with their mouth. You will think a Christian is of God. Because they're one in a good game, right? Go ahead. And with their lips do honor me. Yeah, they clap their hands, dance. You would have think they honor God, right? But this is what God said. But have removed their hearts far from me. Their mind is far away from the Lord. Because in a Christian church right now, you see people dressed just like that. You've been there, you see that people like that. Why? Because their mind is not of God's mind. It's of this man. Remember in, in, in slavery, we don't know how to read or write. So who teach us religion? Say it loud, sister. Don't be afraid. Huh? Your family learned it from who? But who was the original man who teach your family that? The European man. The Spaniard teach that, right? So we have learned the gospel of God from another people. That was not of God. First of all, what would he teach you about God when he's not of God? You understand? So you was under uh, you was under captivity, under a man that there was not made of God, or even the follow the philosophies of God, even are keeping the laws of God. You understand? So now our job is to change. Why? Give me Isaiah 50. Yeah, yeah. Isaiah 50. Isaiah 50. Isaiah 50. The question is why God is punishing you. Yeah, not me, my son. Yeah, your son. He's punishing you too. Believe me or not. I'm asking God, what did you want me to say? Okay, he's going to tell you right now. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Because the people of Israel, which you are coming of, God, Moses prophesied, if we keep these commandments, these curses that we left Egypt, he would never put this curse upon us. Okay? Then he said, if we keep the commandment, you understand? He's not going to put this curse upon us. But if we don't keep the commandment, He's going to put these curses upon us, right? Wearing pants is a curse. You understand? Now the, your trouble is in the process of the curse. You're under the curse. Because you don't want to keep God's commandment, but you want to ask God, why you do that to me? Why you attack me? Why you do that to my son? Why you, Would there not be common sense to say, God, teach me your way? Then you'll be able to teach your son God's way so he don't go through what you're going through. But we don't want to keep no commandments, sister. Our question is, why are you doing that to me, Lord? You see what I'm saying to you? Because why are you in the mix of... Yes! If you don't fear God, why would you come to him and say, why you didn't do this, why you didn't that? After he told you he was going to do that to you, if you don't keep that commandment. They told me that it could be job of the devil. No, no, no. The, uh, the, it's the job of God. Go ahead. The devil says 
no, no, no. It's it just a word of philosophy. Yeah. But it's the job of God. What we just read, God put these curses upon us. Okay, go ahead. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments, and his statutes, which I command thee this day, then all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Well, see, all these curses are going to come above, upon us and overtake us, right? Give me the madness one. Deuteronomy 28, verse 28, and the Lord shall smite thee with madness. You see, the Lord's going to smash us with madness. When you're looking at our society, there's not madness going on. A lot of madness going on. Look at that woman. Their beauty is in the outside of parents, wearing dress, all prerogative. That's what they, they think about beauty is. But that's how God thinks beauty is, right? Remember, like the brother that's been this scripture, in Proverbs 28, verse, I think 13, 28 and 9. 28 and 9. Listen to what God said. Yeah, I'm going to answer you question. Just give me one second here. One second, let me just answer you. Proverbs 28, verse 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. You see, you're supposed to know the law. For your prey, for, for your prey not to be an abomination, you're supposed to keep God's law. But if you're not keeping God's laws, your prayer is what? An abomination. You see what I'm saying to you? So your your thing now should ask us, give me Matthew, I think 19 and 16 an hour, right? You know, yeah. Your question to us should be this. I'm gonna show you. Matthew 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? This is a young man come to Christ. What's good things that I must do, Christ? Because I've been living a sinful life. What do I need to have eternal Keep life? Keep the commandment. Sister, you're going to go through things in this life. Because you're not a commandment keeper. You understand? We're going to go through. You might go through the same thing you're going through. Remember, we got hope in our side. We got God in our side. But you don't have God in your side. That's why your prayer is not rich to God, because you not, do not worship God. You have not been submission into the Lord's statutes and commandments, because nobody been teaching you that. Your time is now, sister, where you have meet God. God is asking you to repent, change back your way. Are you willing to do that? Not only for your son, for your soul, too. So what you going to do? gonna try the best you can. Give me uh, David and some some thirty. What is that? Thirty two. You saying that you're gonna try the best you can, right? Don't leave yet, sister. I'm going to tell you a question. Just be patient. Uh, you saying that? I'm angry the world. Yeah, because the world has done you dirty, sister. They have done all of us dirty. They tell us that Satan is doing all the evil on this earth, but God said He the one who created good and evil. You understand? Go ahead. Deuteronomy, Psalms 32, verse 5. I acknowledge my sin unto thee. You see, David saying that we have, we coming into Christ, we have to acknowledge our sin. Yeah. Some of us don't acknowledge our sin. How could you know, how could you acknowledge your sin when you don't know what sin is? You understand? But remember, he said we have to acknowledge our sin. But our people don't know what sin is. Because it's God said we have to acknowledge where we are, right? If we don't know where we are from, something wrong. Like you, if you were the left here, you're saying you're going to try your best. But you don't know God's laws. How could you try your best? Let's see what sin is. Go ahead, brother. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. He said he sinned, he have not hid from the Lord. He put everything in the open. Let's see that what sin is. We have to know what David's talking about. Let's see what sin is. First because, John 3. Because, uh, because in our religion world, they're telling us that sin, that's when you do something bad. That's not what sin is. The Bible is going to tell you what sin is. Go ahead. First John 3 verse 4. Whosoever committed sin, transgressive also the law. What God just tells you. What sin is? Whosoever do what? Read it again for her. Whosoever committed sin, transgresseth also the law. If you commit sin, you transgress God's law. Who God give the law to? Your forefather, her forefather, her forefather. You understand? That means that sin, 
you have to know God's laws to know what you're breaking. But if you just tell God that every Sunday you go to the church and God forgive me for my sin, God require confession. What you what you come before me for? Oh, forget all my sin, Lord. You know, you know, you know what I did. That's not what God said. Though. They say you have to confess it and acknowledge. You have to acknowledge and confess what you did. But in our American world, so-called religion, so-called Christian, Catholic, all kind of religion out here saying, no, 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 no. You can go to him anytime and, and plead for your sin. You have not know what sin is then. Because you have to know what sin is. For you to say, Lord, forgive me for what sin? Lord, last night I have committed adultery. This is how I did it. Forgive me for that. The next Sunday again, you come to the Lord. Lord, I have committed adultery last night again. You don't have not no God said. Because God say a man that do that, he don't have no understanding of him. You understand? Now let's pay attention to the thing. Go ahead, brother. Whosoever committed sin, transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is transgression of God's laws, right? That's what sin is. So you have to know God's laws to know sin. But if you don't know, give me that in, in, in uh, uh, Romans 7, uh, you know what I don't need that. This is what Paul said. This is what Paul said. Romans 7, verse 12. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. Okay, give me that one Paul said, I have not no sin. Let's see what Romans Paul 7, said. Romans 7, verse 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Let's go. Nay, I had not known sin uh -huh. but by the law. You see that? You have to know your sin by the law. That's what Paul said. You have to know sin by the law. Then if you never know God's laws, how could you know what sin is?